Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Rox with a little bit of talk about what's at the top of the blog, so let's get to it. All right, you guys, so top of the blog today, I got a lot of information, a lot to share today. We're going to kind of call this the degrees of separation top of the blogs edition because it seems like everybody's story kind of lapses with at least one other person in this uh, top of the blogs but anyway let's get started sort of with an update we got to talk about bill cosby and his whole you know drugging and raping uh claims that he has against him by many many women the latest story is <clears throat> Former top model Beverly Johnson has come out with a vanity article where she wrote that she was drugged by Bill Cosby and um, that he, you know, with the intentions of him raping her, that it didn't happen. So basically in the article that came out, she said that uh, she was going to play a role on the Bill Cosby show, a pregnant woman, and he wanted her to come to his apartment in New York to go over uh, some scenes to see if she was going to be able to pull it off. So she went to his place. He told her that he wanted her to act like she was drunk. She couldn't quite understand why she was acting as if she was drunk if she was going to be pregnant. However, she said she went along with it. And um, while she was doing that, he offered her some espresso. And she didn't want to drink it, but she said it didn't feel right to argue with him, considering he's Bill Cosby. And so she drank it. She said within the within the first couple of sips, she knew that she had been drugged. And her quote was that she had been drugged and drugged good. And the reason why she knows this is because she's a top model of the 70s. And she's been in that whole entire scene where there's a lot of drugs and alcohol, a lot of mood enhancers, a lot of things going around. She said she absolutely knew the feel of being drugged okay so um she said she could feel the room spinning she said that you know she couldn't barely stay on her feet she even had to hold on to him to steady herself uh, but she was very aware of what had happened so she said she kept saying you a motherfucker ain't you she said she said it about four or five times and she wanted to make it clear that she knew that he had drugged her and that seemed to make him mad so she said that he dragged her out of his apartment went down to the street, called a taxi, threw her ass in the taxi, and never said anything else to her again. She said she went home. She don't know how she got in her bed, but she said she woke up the next day. She said she was woozy for a couple of days, um, but she had to get back to work. She thought that she would confront Bill Cosby about it because she knew that he knew and that she knew that, you know, what had went down. And when she called him, he had given her his private number. When she called him, his wife answered the phone and said that it was 11 o'clock. They were both in bed. And um, she was like, I apologize. I didn't realize there was a time difference. I guess she was in L.A. or on the West Coast somewhere. And uh, she said she would call back. However, she never did. But you guys know how these things go. Everyone is saying, why did she wait till now to say something? I don't even know why people ask that question. Okay, it's just so funny to me that people don't realize that when you are a little small person, even if she was a big model back then, the models back then are not like how they are today. Okay, and um, Bill Cosby was Bill Cosby. Okay, he was huge. He was big. Everybody loved him, black and white alike. And uh, I'm sure that he could have crushed her career. Before I even read the article, I already assumed that that was the reason why she didn't say anything. But, you know, within these last couple of weeks, this last month or two, people have been coming out. I'm sure that her, you know, her nerve has come up. And um, that's why she spoke out. So, you know, Beverly Johnson, of course, now that the bigger names are coming out and, and saying something against him, you know, I'm wondering who will believe it. It's a little different when it's people that you consider nobodies. I mean, really, nobody is nobody, but you know what I mean. And then when you have someone who is a celebrity, you know, come out against them. And yeah, it's just, it's just terrible. Like I told you before, I believe it. And the saddest thing about it is that he's in his golden years and, you know, that this is how it has to go out. But, you know... You know, you do things, <laughs> you know, and then it comes back to bite you in the ass. Especially, you know, Bill Cosby with, you know, his high moral compass and, you know, he's this and he's that. He's pointing the finger. Black people don't do anything. Yeah, I can't even get into all of that again. But, um, you know, he just, he's not going to get away with it. 
Okay, and you know, this is probably going to kill the man. Not wishing that he's dead by any means, but this is definitely going to take his toll on him. The sad thing about it is going to take the toll on his wife as well. I'm sure Camille knew. Um, even if she didn't believe that he raped anybody, she had to know that her man was out there for real. For real, for real. Okay, and she's old school. She's stand by your man type. But you know, for a woman to have to stand by and know that their husband at least was fucking everybody. Okay, and that has come out like this. Yes, yeah, too bad for Camille. You know, you're in your 80s or 70s, late 70s, and then, you know, your shit is just fucked up like this. So, everything that's done in the dark comes to light, usually. If he was going to be lucky enough to get away with it, then why you didn't just shut up and just don't, you know, how you just going to be preaching to everybody and your shit stink? That's the part that I don't understand. It's always the ones that just want to be telling everybody what they should and shouldn't do okay and you fucked up yourself so anyway you guys that is the story with uh beverly johnson versus bill 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 johnson bill cosby you guys tell me what you think about it do you believe her story are you still standing by bill cosby um i know a lot of celebrities don't want to speak out against it um and i understand why but uh you know we ain't celebrities here so <laughs> y'all let me know what you think who do you believe now Okay, and you guys, since we're talking about Hollywood and big names in Hollywood, we have to talk about the Sony email hack and how it seems like it has really brought on some bad times for top executives at Sony Pictures. One being Amy Pascal, who is the co-chairwoman of Sony. Some emails have been leaked to the public. Um, aliases of celebrities, you know, the names that they use when they go to the hotels, um, some unpublished scripts, um, they said uh, some contracts, just a whole bunch of shit that have been leaked from Sony Pictures. And in all of that is also some emails of them talking, not necessarily in the best light um, of some big names in Hollywood, of some black folks in Hollywood, of your President Obama. Just a whole lot of things that I'm sure they didn't want to get out. You guys, I done told you, technology is going to be the death of us. That shit is really bad because, you know, when you type it up and when, or you take a picture and you send it, it is there. Even if you don't see it anymore, it is there and it can be pulled back. So, in this case, Amy Pascal... Um, had a couple of emails that were really not all in the best light. One, when she's talking about Angelina Jolie. Evidently, there was a Steve Jobs movie that they were trying to get made. And Angelina Jolie wanted to do a movie about Cleopatra, where she played Cleopatra. I'm not even going to get into that, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, but um, she Angelina Jolie wanted the director to play, I mean, to direct her movie. And they were trying to get this certain director to do the Steve Jobs movie. The pull of Angelina Jolie pulled it. And um, Amy Pascal and another person, they were talking back and forth. And they were very upset about that. Um, and in the, in the email, they called her a minimally talented, <laughs> spoiled brat. There is also an email of her talking about the, there's this this um, this person named Jeffrey Katzenberg. I think he works for DreamWorks. I don't know exactly what he does. He's a big name at DreamWorks. He was having a breakfast that was politically, um, you know, a political breakfast for President Obama. And Amy Pascal was not really that big on going. She was joking around with somebody and saying like, oh, what do I say to the president? Should I ask him if he liked the butler? Uh, did he like think like a man? You know, she's making all these jokes about all these different black movies and wondering if he would watch them and you know there was also email that was leaked about um them talking about kevin hart how they wanted kevin hart to do um some publicity for a movie i don't even remember what the movie was what was the movie i can't remember what the movie was but anyway kevin hart had signed on to do his regular public junket junkets you know radios interviews you know going around and promoting the movie but uh if they wanted him to tweet about it and be on social media about it then he was going to charge them extra for that and they were upset about that and they called him a whore and um you know the funny thing about this story before i really get into you know the reactions of everybody you know i think that a lot of this shit that they said was stuff that is said pretty often in hollywood okay i i, I wasn't really super offended by anything that was said there you know 
even though it's a shame that it was said and it was caught on email, I know that we all say shit like that. Even though it may have been racially insensitive, I still, you know, I don't know. I just, me personally, is just, I feel like it's more about just the whole Hollywood thing and this is what these people do. I mean, you have um, folks that are really always trying to watch the bottom line and watch their money and, you know, so I, I don't know. It's bad that it was caught, but I know that this goes down a lot, even down to them talking about Angelina Jolie and Kevin Hart and, you know, things like that. So it seems like people are being a little sensitive about it. But, you know, I guess if I was one of those three that they were talking about or the many other people that they were talking about, then maybe I would get offended. But, um, you know, to say all that, President Obama's camp, of course, hasn't said anything. And I doubt that they will. Um, Angelina's people haven't said anything. And I doubt that they will. Um, because why, you know, the only person that really has had to say anything about it is Kevin Hart. He didn't even have to say anything to me. It was, you know, I don't know what he thought he was doing. I guess he was, you know, clapping back or whatever, but I, I, you know, he, he goes and he says, you know, he works hard. He's never going to let anybody take advantage of him. You know, basically if I'm going to be doing some shit, you're going to pay me for it. This is my brand, you know, yada, yada, yada shit that we already knew shit that he didn't have to say. I guess he just really wanted to respond. So I, you know, I don't know. Everybody is saying that Amy Pascal's future is in jeopardy as Sony and it probably will be because of just the pressure of her talking you know she talked about this Katzenberg person and I'm not you know sure but you know Katzenberg is definitely a Jewish last name Hollywood is run by the Jewish folks is Pascal what is that you guys what is that as a last name I almost want to say that might be I don't know because you know I always be thinking Bergs and stuff is uh is a Jewish for sure but anyway um but you guys tell me what you thought about all of the stuff that they said. Is it racially insensitive, you know, for her to talk about President Obama like that? Yes. Is it mean that she's an all-out racist? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, the whole thing about Kevin Hart definitely has nothing to do with race. It has to do with the bottom fucking line and them not wanting to pay him. Okay, not wanting to pay. So, and I'm sure there's plenty of other celebrities that they don't want to pay as well. But the fact that he's black, you know, people get all up in arms. But, you know, all of y'all tell me what you think about it. It's funny, though. They're saying that the emails was leaked because there's been pressure on Sony not to release this movie, the interview that's coming out on Christmas Day. That's the movie about um, um, Seth, 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 what's his name? Seth Rogen and the other guy. They are going to uh, kill North Korean dictator um, what is his name, you guys? I can't, I was John Ung. John, what is his name? <laughs> um, Kim Jong Un, okay? That's what, in the movie, they're, they're supposed to kill him. And they don't want, the, there's some groups that don't want the movie released because this is a real life political leader of uh, North Korea and you guys are making a movie, a comedy at that about really killing him on this movie. So they're trying to get them to stop it and Pascal, Pascal green lighted it. And so they were, you know, people are pissed about it. So they're saying that that might be a reason why they're being attacked so much with this leak. When I saw the commercials for the interview, I thought it was, I thought it was interesting. I thought it was interesting that they would put something like that out. Um, it actually looks like it might be kind of funny, but yeah, I'm sure that they they are pissing some folks off there so you guys tell me what you think if you think any of that you know was racially motivated or is it all about the dollar dollar bill y'all and a real sad story in hollywood is this girl stephanie mosley who was killed um by her boyfriend what is his name earl hayes uh, Stephanie Mosley was one of the stars on the show Hit the Floor. I never watched it, but it's a VH1 show. And a real beautiful girl, one of the dancers on that show. She was dating uh, Earl Hayes, who was part of the money team. He's Floyd Mayweather's best friend. And uh, they were going through some sort of breakup at the time. And I guess Earl was very distraught about it. He was FaceTiming Floyd Mayweather while he was going to the house. Evidently, Floyd Mayweather was trying to 
tell him to calm down and don't do anything crazy and evidently Earl was very upset about the fact that the rumor is that she was cheating with a celebrity a celebrity singer um and when he went to the they had a she had a condo on third and fairfax out in los angeles when he went there um they said there was a woman that was screaming and then there were some gunshots and when the police went in there they found them both dead they couldn't tell at the time who had killed who but i think it's come out since then of course that he killed her and then went on ahead to kill himself so very, very sad story, okay? It has come out now that the person that they were, um, that it was suspected that she was cheating with was singer Trey Songs, And I think 50 Cent was the one who spilled the beans on that one. You know, I don't know if that's true or not, but they're in the middle of a breakup. Um, so, I mean, it could be you know and i don't even know if that's considered cheating if you guys are in the middle of a breakup i don't think they were married i don't think they were married so but yeah it's just sad it's too bad that somebody is so distraught you know when someone wants to break up with you that you have to go and kill them okay it was really too bad as well that on the internet after it happened that everybody was going on and on with the rest in peace earl hayes and yes i guess the man should rest in peace but you know we got to remember that he killed somebody he killed this woman who you know even if she was cheating don't nobody deserve to die about it so it was sad that people were kind of forgetting that she was the victim in that and then finally people started speaking out and saying i'll you know i'll never say rest in peace to a killer um, even if he is dead himself, you know, folks were even going so far to say, you know, rest in hell. So, yeah, it's a sad thing. I don't know if Trey Songs was definitely having an affair or cheating around with a girl, <clears throat> but you know, it's interesting that Trey Songs' name always comes up in these murder suicides. You guys re remember that Trey Songs was, even though he it wasn't ever said that he had an affair with the girl but remember the football player who killed his girlfriend and then killed himself um he thought it was it a football player i think he was a football player he thought that his girl was having an affair with trey songs it come out that she had just went to a trey songs concert and that um you know he was just extremely jealous and there were some other things going on in that relationship too but yeah trey songs is it's the second time he's been linked to a murder suicide so it's very interesting but yeah just too too bad it's looking like though through the devastation of this murder suicide at least 50 cent and floyd mayweather have seems like they are trying to mend their friendship and good enough for them because you know 50 Cent had been riding that boy so bad and teasing him so bad. And, and um, you know, I think that, you know, I always said that them two was in love with each other. <laughs> it was just too strange how them two would go back and forth. But, um, you know, maybe this death and realizing that life is very short and that, you know, it's really silly to just be fighting over so many silly things that maybe they were able to get their friendship back on track. So, but yeah, very, very sad story. We're going to say rest in peace to um, Stephanie Mosley. We're praying for everybody involved there, both families, um, the friends of them. Just, <sighs> it's scary, you guys. You know, if, if shit ain't working out and if we just need to call it a day, you ain't got to kill nobody. You ain't got to kill nobody. Ooh, y'all be careful out there. All right, you guys, the next story up is all this shit about K. Michelle. I have so much stuff to tell you guys about K. Michelle. First up, K. Michelle has an album that just came out, um, and she has been promoting it heavily. She's been on a lot of interviews, on the radio, on the TV, and she is really promoting the album. I listened to the album yesterday, and I was cool with the album. I didn't buy it because only because it's 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 very ballady to me like i'm not in ballad mode like i want some feel good up tempo kind of music that i want to hear and um i think that was the reason why i didn't buy omarion just not in that mode so okay michelle's album came out and um like I said, she's been doing a lot of press for it. She was on The Breakfast Club the other day. And of course, they love when they have K. Michelle there because K. Michelle has absolutely no filter. This girl is a very complicated person. There's only a few people in this that I know, both personally and just through the media and watching on TV and everything, that I really truly feel is complicated. And K. Michelle is definitely 
one of those people. Always a lot of controversy surrounds her name. So, like I said, they love controversy on Breakfast Club. They had her on there. They're drinking. The drinks was flowing. And, uh, you know, Charlemagne and Angie, they just, they just ask her questions and let it rip. Okay. Um, and, of course, the question came up about um, Little Kim. And... You know, K. Michelle was like, I swear for God that that girl asked me to be her child's godmother. And K. Michelle was like, and I even thought that it was strange myself because I didn't even really know her. But she did. She definitely asked me. After she was on that interview, then, of course, little Kim put out, you know, this whole long uh, post about, you know, this is she was going to ignore this shit, you know, that the girl is crazy, she's a bipolar, Prozac popping bitch, and that uh, she only met K. Michelle one time, and that one time that she met her, she hadn't even announced that she was pregnant, even her mother didn't know that she was pregnant, so she don't know where she got this whole, I asked her to be my god, uh, godmother of my child, but you know, I'm not going to argue with a crazy person, her mother told her a long time ago, don't argue with a crazy person, because from far away, nobody can tell who's the crazy one. Okay, she goes on and on to, you know, say she's not going to address it no more. And she heard that K. Michelle has an album out and she wishes her much, much success. And, you know, it was it was all of that. So it was this big, long thing. <laughs> that goddamn K. Michelle got on Twitter and said, um, she refuses to address somebody that went platinum on PayPal. And that she apologized for her late response. However, she was so busy winning. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, I thought that shit was so funny because you guys remember the whole thing about um, Lil' Kim putting out this album and she, you know, she was going to sell it on PayPal and, you know, she said that she sold, like, moved like 120,000 units or something like that and, you know, that it had broke the, the PayPal link and shut down the website and all of this and, of course, nobody believed it back then, you know, and so... I, I'm going to say that K. Michelle won that battle, okay? Um, and I guess the shit is over. Also, in the in, in these interviews that K. Michelle has been doing, it has come up that she has had uh, some sort of relationship with British actor Idris Elba. And you guys, if you guys remember, Idris Elba was the person that directed that whole VH1 foolishness of, uh, what was her last album? Y'all remember she did the 30 minute, it was like a 30 minute video. They kept calling it a musical. What was it called, y'all? Anyway, he was the director of that. And I'm supposing during the time that they were working together on that, they had some sort of um, booty call arrangement. I'm not going to call it a relationship. Only because... Listen, I don't know what it is about K. Michelle. Well, I do know what it is. It's the big ass. It's the whole, you know, she's a funny person. There is a draw definitely to K. Michelle. Michelle is K. Michelle is able to pull these men for sure. Okay. But she's not able to keep the men. Okay. They willing to try her out, but they not willing to keep her. And I think that is because it's just some sort of, you know, there's just some sort of something about K. Michelle that they want to be involved with. Um, but they keep her under wraps. Okay. We always find out about these relationships after the fact um, you know, that she's heartbroken over what they did to her and things like that. I just really think that these men take advantage of K. Michelle and that she allows it, that she gets caught up in the whole idea of being in love with somebody, but it just never works out that way. Now, evidently, Idris Elba was having a baby with a girl here in Atlanta who supposedly was a stripper at one time, but, you know, he wiped her down. They're not married, but they had this baby together, and he was always with this woman, but fucking around with K. Michelle. And, um, you know, so she... She developed feelings for him. And like I said, I don't think he ever had any intentions of it, you know, going any further than, you know, they were fucking around while they were working together for that video. But I also think that K. Michelle likes to use all of this, you know, all of this turmoil and strife for her music. It's what inspires her. So I kind of feel like, you know, she uses them in the same way that they use her. That this is all good for her career and this is all good for her music. The girl is a good music writer. She's a good songwriter. She kind of has the same style as R. Kelly. When she sings, it's always a story behind it. It's not just her, you know, singing a chorus and a couple of verses. It's always a story. And um, so she's definitely talented. But yeah, people are saying that they don't believe it and all of that. First of all, Idris Elba has not denied it. And usually when they don't deny it, it's because they're just trying to hope that the story just goes away quietly. I'm sure he has to deal with the fact that he's got this baby mama here. 
um, in Atlanta. And, um, you know, she's telling all the business about how they fucked around and how, you know, they really liked each other. It just didn't work out. She wrote the song about them. I think it's called Maybe I Should Call and um, all of that. So, but yeah, I definitely believe it. It happened. Definitely believe it. I mean, she has no reason to lie. But yeah, I think it's, you know, I don't know. People don't believe it, but yeah, I believe it. Now, K. Michelle does have a history of putting 20 on 10 for sure. You know, that whole thing about Memphis, supposedly he beat her ass and all of that. And then we find out in court that he threw a water bottle at her. So, you know, I came with all of that. She definitely knows how to stretch a story. So that's why all of these things, you know, with the um, incident with little Kim and whether or not she asked her to be the baby dad, I mean the godmother, um, this stuff with Idris Elba, um, you know, I think she likes to embellish a little bit. Maybe not, but it just kind of gives you that feeling. People don't really know what to believe with K. Michelle, but look, K. Michelle has a good time with everything, okay? I like, she's, she's engaging and she's, like I said, the draw is there because she is just a personality that's big and booming and just, you know, she pulls you in. Um, and that's why it's hard to just 100% not like her because she's just a funny, It's you know, it's just always something with K. Michelle. So, you know, she got this shit with Lil' Kim and then she got this shit with Idris Elba. Um, she's promoting this album. Then we find out her connection with this whole Meek Mill um, and Nicki Minaj thing now. I read this on Baller Alert. You guys have got to read the article because Baller Alert, I was like, y'all got the tea for real on this one. Okay, so let me just give you this little piece of, uh, <laughs> this little niblet of gossip. So, it has come out that Nicki Minaj and Meek Mill have been seeing each other uh, for some time. You guys know that Nicki Minaj has been on this, in this last year, her and her boyfriend, what's his name, Safari, 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 <laughs> whatever it is, Saf Breezy, that's what they call him. This last year or so, they've been on and off, breaking up, getting back together, it's been drama with him and them fighting and, you know, her taking back the, the car that she bought him and, you know, all of this. And, and they're saying that while all this was going on, um, Meek Mill has been quietly in the background being the shoulder that she could cry on when shit was going south with Sab Breezy. Now, they say that when Meek Mill was in jail that Nicki Minaj was the only female that was on the visitation list and um, that they've been carrying this on undercover for quite some time now. Now, now that he's out um, and uh, it looks like these two have been kind of seeing each other, there was some drama with K. Michelle. So now, K. Michelle has this album, Anyone Want to Buy a Heart. There's this song by the same name. Wait, is that the name of the album? I think that's the name of the album. But anyway, there was a song, Anyone Want to Buy a Heart, that Meek Mill originally was going to use. He let K. Michelle hear it. When K. Michelle heard it, she really liked it. I don't think that he was going to use it. So she took it. Well, she didn't take it, but the A&R rep, they both have the same A&R person, obviously, and they're on the same label. The A&R person gave her the song because they assumed that Meek Mill was not going to use it. So she made the song, and it was going to be included on the album, and I guess it was going to be like the, what is it, the, the, the focus song on the whole entire album. The song is really good. I heard it this morning, and I actually like the song. And, and um, it's an upbeat song, so it was like it was perfect for what she needed to do. She needs, I feel like she needs some, you know, a little bit more dancey type tunes. It wasn't that fast, but you know what I mean. So anyway... After she did that, was going to put on the album, Meek Mill was like, I didn't say that she could take that song. That's my song. So he snatched it back. So she wasn't able to add it onto the album. Not only did he snatch it back, but he gave it to Nicki Minaj because that's his new woman. Nicki Minaj said that she liked the song. So he gave it to her and she added it on her album that's scheduled to come out uh, next Tuesday. I and mean, it's just called Buy a Heart. Um, and it's a bonus track on there. And on side note, Nicki Minaj's album leaked, I think, either last night or this morning. Um, so it's it's out now, which is which is a shame. I don't know why. I was like, who's Sab Breezy? Did you do that? Because, honey, they didn't pull Sab Breezy off as the executive producer. He's been the executive producer, producer on all of her albums. And um, this is the first album that they have that 
he's not on there. Okay, so they say that Sap Breezy didn't fell on some hard ass times, okay, because he didn't made all these YouTube videos, you know, talking about robbing Meek Mill. And I mean, you know, it's all, you know, low key and not necessarily saying Meek Mill, but you know, everybody knows that he means Meek Mill. It's a whole bunch of different videos about robbing some big time rapper or some shit. Anyway, so like I said, um, Nicki Minaj got the song by a heart. It's feature, I think it features Meek Mill as well. K Michelle, salty about that, right? So now they're saying that K Michelle leaked the relationship between Meek Mill and Nicki Minaj. Also, I forgot to tell you guys that on the day that K Michelle's album came out, Nicki Minaj leaked her song um, Big Daddy. And I think that song also features Meek Mill. Did it on the same day that K. Michelle's album was was uh, released. So today or yesterday, I think K. Michelle released her version of "Anyone Wanna Buy a Heart." Now, of course, it's not on her album. However, it's on the internet now, and you can hear it. And like I said, it's a shame that the song is not on her album because it's a good song and it's a fast song, and it would have been the one that made me kind of feel like maybe I would buy her album. So. Yes, a whole bunch of shit going on with these two, y'all, with these three. It's a triangle. Um, K. Michelle did say on The Breakfast Club that she never did have a relationship with Meek Mill. She's never, you know, touched him, kissed him, any of that. But I think clearly we know that there was some sort of flirting. It was something going on with K. Michelle and Meek Mill, okay? And um, like I said, maybe she was more serious about it than he was. You know, these guys seem to like to, you know, play with it, but, you know, not not keep it as their own. So anyway, did you guys get all of that? I'm going to tell you what, that K. Michelle going to sell some albums, honey. Okay, she was on Wendy Williams yesterday, and I, I evidently, I, don't e I didn't even see it because I already had enough shit with all of this. But, um... I was like, I ain't mad, K. Michelle. Do your damn thug thizzle, okay? But uh, we'll see. Do you guys believe that Nicki Minaj and Meek Mill together? I mean, Nicki Minaj posted a picture of, you know, all these diamond bracelets that she supposedly got from Meek Mill. And, you know, Meek Mill has been posting different little things undercover um, and on the slick and on the low about a relationship or him, you know, consoling. Yeah, it's just a whole lot. I want you guys to go on Baller Alert and, and read the article. But, yeah, I thought that was a fun little story. I was like, shit, I got Y'all look at all that shit I didn't wrote down. Can y'all see? I was, I, was getting the, I was getting the tea for y'all. Okay, but anyway, y'all, that's it on K. Michelle, y'all. Did you buy the album? What did you think about it? <laughs> This story seems so old now, but I'm going to talk about it anyway because this is, I never get a chance to really say I told you so. And I love when I get an I told you so moment, even though I hate when people say it to me. You guys say it to me so much. Okay, let me just have it this time. So remember when I was going on and on about how Chris Brown needs to sit his ass down somewhere and shut the fuck up because he's always the one that puts his business out about him and Cariucci. And then, you know, when that whole big blow up of him going off on Tamar Braxton and... Uh, Adrian Bailon about the things that they said on their show um, everybody was just like well he's you know it must be real hard for him and people's always in his business and all that okay the motherfucker puts his shit out there okay case in point this last time okay he goes off on this rant about them I guess they got into a fight they're breaking up you know he says that he's single at a very large concert then he goes on to Twitter or to Instagram and he posts all this shit about how Carrie Uchi knew what it was when they first got together. They were having threesomes. You know, he was living a life. He slowed it all down for her. When he went to jail, she didn't hold him down. He was out there. She was out there in Toronto fucking around with Drake. Um, and that, you know, he's just over it. You know, it's just been one big, it's been one big act that they've been putting on for the world. You know, this whole ride or die thing. All of this he puts out. Okay. This is what the fuck why I say. Okay, people are always going to be in his business because he puts it out there. Okay, nobody is digging through Chris Brown's life. Nobody has to do that because he's stupid enough to put it out for everybody. Not only does he do it, she does it. Okay, she posts, okay, niggas be in their feelings when you break up with them and all of this shit. So, yeah, these two definitely put their business out there for people to comment on so like i said in videos before whatever i don't want you guys to know about me i don't put it out there because if i don't want you to comment on it then i'm not gonna say it 
Okay, the minute you put some shit out for somebody to talk about, then that's what they have the right to do it. And that's why exactly why I say he need to go sit down and shut up somewhere. And this is the reason why people are always in their fucking business. And I told you so. I told you so. Okay, of course, after that happened, then he puts out another thing about everybody knows I love that girl and I was upset and I feel real whack about the things that I said and I shouldn't have did this and, you know, whoop whoop and womp womp and all that shit that <laughs> Portia said. I'm so sick of Chris Brown, Cariucci, Carucci, Pikachu. Okay, somebody called a karate chop. It's a whole bunch of names out there for that child, but I'm sick of them. Okay, I'm going to continue. People are going to continue to talk about them because they do it. They do it themselves. Okay, now she's saying that, yeah, she did go out to Toronto to visit Drake, but she was just doing it to get back at Chris Brown because, you know, he had Rihanna on his visitation list in when he was in jail. And, you know, they said that Rihanna went and visited him a couple of times. And, you know, she's been. But the whole thing is. You knew you 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 know he 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 he's the one that talked about him being in love with both of these women and you know it's just like all of this shit. Okay, and that girl continues to go back to him. All right, I understand being in love with somebody, but at some point you just it just ain't working. It's fucking not working. You can be in love with somebody, but the shit just it you it just it, you're not compatible. It's not going to work. And uh, but she's gonna end up back with them, you guys. Mark my words, they're gonna end up back together. I just hate to even talk about. It. I'm so tired of them. But I just really wanted to say I told you guys so. Okay, because you guys was really all over me in that video saying that, you know, he has every right and that people need to get out of his business. Oh, bullshit. Okay, fuck him with all that stupidness. Okay, so that's why that's why it's happened this way. So that's that. Okay, then we got Drake in this whole situation with Puffy. Evidently, Puffy was, they were at Live or Live. I never know what it's called, but it's in Miami, I think. And they were at a club together and supposedly Puffy swung her and hit him. People were trying to figure out why. Okay, Drake has been public enemy number one these last couple of weeks as far as him, you know, trying to hit up on everybody's woman. So people are trying to say that it was because he tried to talk to Cassie. That's not what it was, okay? Because Cassie ain't going nowhere, so we ain't got to worry about that. Okay, Cassie has proved that she is right or die. She is there. Okay, so um, now they're saying that, well, duh, <laughs> get my words together. Puffy came out and said... Um, or, or an old video has surfaced that the reason why Puffy was kind of salty with Drake is because he sold, he stole the song. Um, dun, dun, what's the song? Dun, 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 dun. I can't think of the song, you guys. I can hear it in my mind, but I, I don't want to. <laughs> I'm not going to sing it for you. Uh, um, you know, it starts off, it goes, doom, doom. Dun, dun. Oh my god, I can't think of it. Oh my god, it's not there, y'all. This fucking old brain. I'm telling you, don't get old. Motherfucker can't remember shit. But anyway, that's why they're saying that Puffy was upset because he's saying that Drake stole the song for him, even though, you know, Puffy was fine with it. You know, but Puffy was just like, bitch, I know you stole that shit from me. So I was just like, that damn Drake. That Drake be out there, don't And I was like, he, he just the corniest, softest, you know, seems like the nicest little rapper out there. But he sure get under a lot of people's skin. So, anyway, y'all, that's it on the Chris Brown story. Perucci, Cariucci, <laughs> and Drake, and Puffy. See, like I said, it's just so many degrees of separation with these stories, right? Real fast is loving hip hop Hollywood shit, you guys. Just a whole bunch of just fallout foolishness from it. The biggest story right now is whether or not Princess Love tried to kill herself. Evidently, um, her and Ray J had got into some argument. This is the story that was put out originally. Her and Ray J had got to some argument. Um, he wasn't home. She was. She must have told him while they were on the phone that she was going to kill herself. And he totally believed it because there were guns at the house and all that. So he calls the police and tells them, you know, you got to hurry up and get there. She's going to kill herself. And uh, the police get there. And Princess Love is not there. Ain't nobody dead there. And uh, she was fine somewhere else. Um, shortly after that, they were on Instagram posting pictures of themselves they're okay nobody is in danger um they seem to be very happy together you know smiling and all this and now people are saying it's a fucking publicity stunt um morgan comes out and says you know they lowest of the low i'm just like morgan just <laughs> leave it alone baby 
Leave it alone. You know, they're saying that it was a publicity stunt. And folks are kind of upset about it. Especially with, you know, I just told you guys about the story about, the, um, you know, the whole murder-suicide in L.A. So, yeah, suicide right now, this shit ain't, we don't need to be playing with it, ever. Then it started coming out that Ray J and the girl was never really fighting. That he had done some kind of show with BT um, and um, Pikachu, <laughs> Kariuchi, whatever her name is, you guys. They had did some story together. And that she was there and it was fine, even though they were trying to say that that was the reason why they were fighting is because she was jealous that he was there with the child and she wasn't there. But yeah, she was there. So yeah, it was all this foolishness, you guys. Now it's come out today that she has apologized Um that um yeah she did threaten to kill herself however she didn't really mean it okay her and ray j were fighting over get this you guys christmas fucking decorations i'm trying to figure out why the fuck you say you're gonna kill yourself and you guys arguing about some goddamn christmas decoration like what the fuck is wrong with her i mean are you really that much of a drama queen and then why does ray j i'd have been like bitch you want to kill yourself over goddamn ball that's hanging on the tree then that's that's on you okay <laughs> i guess that's not really the nicest but uh, you know what i'm saying i'm just like how does it get elevate that much that we fighting about Christmas decorations that the motherfucker want to kill themselves? That child needs some counseling. Okay, both her and Ray J. So I mean, right there. But yeah, that's the story with them. Um, there's also this story going around about Young Youngberg supposedly being gay. That Ray J's manager, um, Whack 100, is his name. Why is his name that, y'all? Wack 100 says that he went to a studio and he he saw Youngberg in there beating off some underage kid. They're saying that the kid was either Keisha Cole's cousin, nephew, or something like that. That he walked in, he saw them, they were had their hands in each other's pants, and that there was lubrication on the table. So, <sighs> so now everybody's saying that Youngberg is gay. Of course, he's denied it. I'm thinking, like, who cares at this point? I don't really care. But they are saying that he's gay. Do you guys believe that Youngberg is gay? Everybody's going to say, yeah, the way he got excited when Omarion was going to show the turtleneck, you know, the cutoff turtleneck on the TV show. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't even. I don't care. Okay, but y'all let me know if you think he's gay. Um, And I, I think that's it for loving hip-hop Hollywood. I, like I said, I'm glad that show is over. I hope we don't get too much more shit from them. Okay, you guys, and then real quick on the quickies. They're saying that Queen Latifah is pregnant. I am here to tell you that no, Queen Latifah is not pregnant. There's a picture floating around of her from 2012 when she just had a, a gut. She had on a dress that was not flattering to her size. And now folks are saying that Queen Latifah is pregnant. I was just like, please. Somebody on my Instagram was like, I knew she couldn't stay away from, from the wood that long. I was like, girl, if you believe that bitch slept with somebody, uh, a man... Okay, then I got some land to sell you in China. So no, Queen Latifah is not pregnant. Lil Wayne tweeted a cryptic message yesterday that just said, Young money, that's it. And people are saying that maybe this means that he is now off of the cash money label. Um, time will tell. We still don't know what that means. Maybe that's all he just now will claim. Um, but we'll see. And if Lil Wayne does leave cash money, then what does that mean for the label? It cannot mean good times. We know that. Speaking of cash money and baby, let's talk about Keisha Cole and the fact that she was sentenced to 30 days in jail for a 10-year-old um, offense. She tweeted that she'd be going in and uh, 30 days. Yeah, I don't doubt that. She, I doubt that she'll be there more than a couple of days. But even one day in jail is enough for me, okay? So yeah, hang tough, uh, Keisha Cole. And lastly, Stacey Francis, the singer who was on, I think, the show The Voice and was also, no, maybe it was X Factor, and also was known to be the person that fought with Whitney Houston over Ray J uh, in those final days before Whitney Houston's death. She will now be on the TV show R&B Divas LA and they say that the Houston family is upset about it and that they don't want her to use the storyline of her fighting with Whitney Houston um, to you know to be on that show now i'm tired of the houston family trying to block everything i understand that you're trying to guard this girl's legacy and all of that but certain things you just ain't gonna be able to do so i need y'all to sit your eyes down and be quiet over there and let this girl be on her show and talk about whatever she's gonna talk about if that was what happened in her life then she has a right to talk about it i'm tired of the houston family with all that i wish that they would just go concentrate on trying to get they grandbaby okay bobby christina together okay 
you guys I talk so much I'm tired of talking did I get all my stories in yes I think I did get all of my stories in so you guys that is it we do this every single week so make sure that you rate comment and subscribe and make sure you come back Until next time, rock stars. Bye.